Welcome to Go on the Run. So in this video, I want to wrap up our mini series on resource pool. In the first three videos, we implemented our own resource pool. In this video, we're going to use one that's provided by the Go language in the sync package. So let's take a look at the pros and cons of either using the built-in one or implementing your own. So if you remember, in the previous three videos, what we did was we start off by first developing a client application and then a server and then our own resource pool. And we were able to do a little bit of profiling to show that we can reuse our allocated objects many times without having to go back to the garbage collector. So for example, when we had a client that connected um, and sent 100,000 messages, which would normally require us to allocate 100,000 client connection object to receive those messages, but we only allocated from memory about 80 something, less than 100. And we even cranked this up to about 300,000, I think even 400,000 messages served, and yet we allocated about 300 messages. So that was a lot of reuse that we were able to get out of our resource pool. Now, the thing is, we had to implement our resource pool. And I hope you see by now, once we implemented it, that a resource pool is not very difficult to implement. So the question is, should we use the one that's provided by the language? Well, that's going to be up to you. And I suggest that you use profiling and some testing to make that determination. So what I'll do in this video is show you how to use the one that come with the sync package. So let's get started. So we're going to start by, let me reset things here a bit. So I'll start by copying our part three to part four. So that's where we're going to start. So we have our three parts from before. All right, so that should give us three exercises in part four. And that's okay. So now let's start our Visual Studio Code editor in this directory. And we'll start with exercise one. Uh, we could use the resource pool on our client side also, but for now we're just going to stick with still using it on the server. So what does it mean to be able to use the built-in resource pool? Well, if we go to our web browser and you go to golang.org and then the sub forward slash package, you'll come to the page that lists all the packages. And if you scroll on towards the bottom to the sync package here, click on the sync package, and then you scroll down. Once you get to the sync package, you scroll down, you'll see there's this pool type. And there are two methods attached to the pool, which is get and put. Now, if you look at it, you can see get returns an empty interface, put allow you to pass an empty interface. So these are the same two methods essentially that we have. We call them allocate and release, but you can call them anything. Here they decide to call them get to get an object from the pool and put to put an object. Now, if you click on pool, you'll see this give you some documentation of what a pool is, right? It says a pool is a set of temporary objects that may be individually saved and retrieved. Any item stored in the pool may be removed automatically at any time without notification. So one of the things that I enter that is when do you use a pool and when do you use the sync that pool versus when do you make your own resource pool? Well, if you don't like the idea that how an object might be removed from the pool without you knowing, then maybe you might want to implement your own pool so you can have control when you release object for us, we decide to make a channel of a certain length and we know that our object will be released after the channel is filled up and we don't need any more. But it shouldn't really matter for your application whether it's released or not because remember, once you ask the pool for something, if it's not in the pool already, it will just simply allocate it. So it should work the same way. But just in case, that's just something to know. The other thing to note about this pool is that you're always dealing with an empty interface, which means is that when you get something from this pool, you have to cast it to whatever you want to be. At runtime, there's going to be a check. There's going to be a little cost associated with that check to ensure that what you're getting back from the pool. 
Because remember, even if you know that how your pool only return the same thing every single time, well, it's returning an empty interface. So you must do a typecast to get it to the type that you want. So now that we see what the pool look like, let's see how you use it. In order to create a pool, you need to set this new field value to a function that is going to return new objects. And so there are examples here, but basically it's going to be the function that's going to do your allocation of objects. Now we have the similar thing. We just have it built into our get equivalent function, which for us is allocate. So the one advantage with using sing that pool is that the only thing you need to um, define is this new function that's going to be responsible for allocation. You get the implementation for get and put for free. Whereas for all in our implementation, we had to implement that function that frees object or put them back in the pool to make a determination where they're stored, how many to store and so on. We don't have to worry about that here. There's no size or anything like that that we have to manage. So enough talking, the, it's fairly simple. If you read the documentation, let's just jump in and modify our code to use sing that pool. Well, this is example one, and we actually did not implement the pool yet. So if we scroll down, we get to here where all the magic and the work begins. And so you can see we're allocating a new client request message object. This is where we want to allocate instead from the pool. So let's create a pool at the global level, sing that pool. And like I said, we need to field. And this new field is going to be a function that allocates a new object. For this, this is very simple for us. It is simply something that returns a client resource, client request. So this. So we make a client request and we return it, and that's it. Well, of course, our function have to have a return type, and that is interface, an empty interface. So there we go. That's our allocation of our resource pool, and we have defined a new function. So hopefully this is sort of clear. Let me put this on another line and see if it will format it. Yep, there we go. So we've created a new resource pool and we've specified what our new function is. So every time we call a resource pool to get something, if it doesn't have it, it will use this function to allocate our object. Okay, so now that we're using the resource pool, when we want something, we can say resource pool that get. So after we finish using our object, we can return it to the pool put back the message. Now, notice that because we the way in which we're using our resource, which is we pass it to a function that actually accept an empty interface, this is okay. But if we wanted to be able to access those fields in our message, we'll have to do something like this. And specifically, we want to know if it's a pointer to a client request. So we'll have to do something. Now we know that oh, this is always uh, rather, it's this, but we know that this is going to work because we know that oh, this resource pool only returns pointer to client request. So asking for a client request, if our interface, an empty interface object is a client request, this is always going to work. But, and this is only because if we want message, to be of type client request so that we can access its field, okay? But if we don't, in this case, we're not accessing the field directly, we can get away with it. But remember, in your application, you're not gonna always be able to do this. So because you're gonna have this cast that's always happening for interface to the specific type, that's gonna be a runtime cost. So keep that in mind. Okay, so that's all there is to converting our application to using a resource pool. Notice with me talking, it probably took us five minutes. So let's go to the command line and run our code. So we want to go to part four. So let me be lazy for a little bit. and go. So each client is gonna send 100,000 messages. 
our application or server is going to run for about 50 seconds, I think is what we set it to. And so right now our application has been running for about 20 something seconds. Well, it ended after 30 seconds and we did not send all our messages. So I think we need to increase the time that our servers runs. So let's see, let's go to main and increase this to about 50 minutes. So need to rebuild. Okay, great. So this was enough time for us to handle our messages. And so let's wait till our server finishes. Um, this server is not going to be able to tell us how many objects it allocated because we did not put that accountant in. But at least what we're seeing is that we can still successfully run. Okay, so now let's change this so that we build a second version where we have the alloc function to keep track of the messages. So for that, I will delete exercise two, move to the trash. And here I'll just simply say, let's go back up about, I'm being lazy. So go back up, da da da, da da da, and then print working directory. And so ls, so, and it doesn't really matter here actually. Shell. Let me copy minus R exercise one to exercise two. And then I will now enter into the directory, client directory, CD exercise two, client directory. And that's fine. And I only need to go back up one to server. Okay. All right, so this might not make a whole lot of sense, but good working directory. Okay, so that's where you need to end up if you want to be running this with me. So I have one directory, I'm in the server for exercise two and the clients for exercise two in these three other windows. And so what I wanna do with the code, since I've copied the code over, so let's close that, let's close that. Exercise two code, go to the server, server that main that go, we're running, waiting 50 seconds, so that's good. Here, I want to do some accounting. So I wanna make sure I keep track of how many allocations or how many times this function was called. So we already know how to do sync that atomic. That's this guy here. So sync that atomic, add, and so. If we copy this, put it in our function, and instead number of requests, we're not going to count number of requests, we're going to count number of allocations, right? And we'll have a variable call, for example, and that will be it. Every time this function is called, it adds once to this variable alloc. Now, once our server stops, once the stop function is called, stop method here is called, what we will do is print out how many So that's it. That's all we need to do. We'll print out how many objects were allocated. So let's rerun our example. Of course, we have to compile and rerun. So go build, go debug. There we go. Then our clients. So go build this client. I think it's already there because we copy the code. So the client should still be there. But oh well, no harm in rebuilding. And so let's start our server, start the clients, start the clients, start the clients. And I didn't really keep track of how many times 
or what garbage collector was called, which is what I was doing previously um, as an indication of just how busy and how much work the garbage collector ha had to do when we used it with or without a resource pool. And you can still do that, but now what I want to do is just start to look at the built-in resource pool versus the one that we built. And so we will be able to have an idea um, how the two perform. And we did 6,000 allocations. So this tells me that our, our resource pool performs really, really, really well. And we were able to see that just now. Uh, we could run this again, but in my testing, this is sort of what's been happening. Um, we It allocates about 2,000 objects for every 100,000. And so I'm not surprised that with 300,000 messages, it allocates 6,000. No, this is still a lot better than allocating 300,000 objects. Remember, every object that you allocate from memory from the system, you have to free it, and which means the garbage collector eventually have to walk the heap, find that that object is no longer being used, and clean it up. And when you allocate, ask for another client request message, it has to look for space in memory to find um, the appropriate size to allocate that object. So this is still really, really, really good. All right, so let's do one last comparison now with what we had, just to remind ourselves. And so for that, we'll go to exercise three, which is where we left off last in the previous um, part three. So we we'll go to that exercise. So here we are at exercise three and client. And then I'll do this, go here and let's do clear the sky so I should have cleared all of them before and print work in directory this is where we are print work in directory okay print work in directory okay so this is where we are exercise three so let's look at exercise three code before we run it so let's close this so exercise one and two is where we use the built-in pool sync that pool and exercise three is where we use our pool and so let's see main that go 50 seconds same time and here we're using our own resource pool and we are doing some accounting let's just run this and see what we get so let's prepare our server prepare our clients and run our server run our clients and if we fast forward to the end, to the result, this is what we see. Here we see the number of objects allocated. And as you can see, we allocated far fewer objects than what um, the pool. Now I imagine this number will vary between the two. And so if I were to rerun this again, um, it might come in to be, um, uh, so I gotta rerun that yet again, uh, clients, so. It might be, you know, slightly more, or I don't expect it to be much less, but it should vary a little bit. I, I think it will vary. And similarly for the built-in sync pool, I think that will also vary a little bit. The general thing though seems to be that when we do our own pool, we're able to reuse far fewer objects. And that also means, and so notice we have 156 this time, but it's below 200. So we're using less than 200 objects for 300,000 connection. Whereas when we go to the other one, um, the built-in one, we see it how it's more like 2,000 2, per every 100,000. And so if I go back and go exercise two and client, and I clear the screen, print work in directory just so you see where I'm at. And here we go to server and I won't have to rebuild this but you can see again 6,000 objects so that has sort of been consistent with my testing so that's it so in summary we're actually whether you use your own resource pool or the one that's in sync package it's still sort of better than you have to 
allocate a large number of objects you can get reuse so consider that as a first step i think you can start off with the built-in one and then if you have reason to believe that you can do better well then you go ahead and implement it hopefully the four parts in the series taught you something and give you a little bit more appreciation for not only how simple go makes things but just the go language in general that's it bye, -bye.